So how can you increase your chances of survival if you are caught in an avalanche? Had he touched on some of that, we want to get more now from Dr. Chris Van Tilburg, who's a wilderness physician, also the author of Mountain Rescue Doctor, joining us this morning from Portland, Oregon. Doctor, good to have you with us. We just heard Hattie mention a few things there, but if you are caught in an avalanche, what is the most important thing you need to do to survive? Well, thanks for having me. Um, there are several things that you can do to survive. One of them is, as Hattie mentioned, you can't outrun an avalanche. It's just the avalanches run between 50 and 70 miles per hour and you can't. So you can scoot out to the side if possible. If you get knocked off your feet, grab a tree, grab a rock, dig your ski pole into the uh, snowpack so the avalanche will go over top of you. And then finally, if you get kind of tumbled in the avalanche, it's like being caught in a, the rapids of a river. It will have a tendency to drag you down. So you have to try to fight to swim with your arms to stay on the top of the snowpack. And when it comes to a stop, clear an area um, out in front of your face so you can breathe when the snowpack stops and shoot a hand upward to try to uh, alert your rescuers where you're buried. Because people need to know where you are. There have been some really heartbreaking tales with survivors over the last couple of mm -hmm. weeks of people forced to leave their friends behind. If you are skiing, snowboarding with someone, they become trapped, how do you help them? Well, that's a great question. First of all is um, you need to uh, immediately watch your partner. And a lot of people think, oh, I got to get my cell phone out or I got to run for help. You have to watch your partner because a lot of times if you watch where your partner gets tumbled in an avalanche and where they end up, you can mark that as the last scene point. And a lot of times they're very quick. Uh, you can find them very quickly if you can just watch them and watch where they're, um, the avalanche is taking them. So that's really the first step. That, that's the first step. Also, um, I know Hattie showed us a little bit of this, but you have some more information on these avalanche survival kits, which are uh, imperative at this point. Yes, um, the first would be an avalanche rescue beacon, and this is a, about the size of a cell phone. It's a transceiver. It broadcasts a signal about 50 meters, and we all wear this under our jackets if we're out in the backcountry or an avalanche terrain, and it sends out a signal. And so if your partner gets caught, uh, you can um, mm -hmm. switch it to a, a receive mode and home in on them and, and locate them. So but that that's key. I know along with the, the shovel, there was also talk of the probe so that you can actually reach around in the snow safely to look for someone. Before we let you go, though, yes. are there any signs when you're out there uh, that you can look for to know, get a little warning that an avalanche may be coming? Well, you can, you can call the avalanche hotline. There's a lot of uh, forest service hotlines that you can call. But uh, I guess the big thing is I tell people if, if you're not sure if it's safe or not, you probably shouldn't be out in the backcountry. Some great advice from you this morning. Dr. Chris Van Tilburg, thanks so much for your time. Sure.